this is a ghost town as as uh, purely defined as that term could be. Wendover, Wyoming. It doesn't appear on a lot of maps. I happened to find it because I was exploring, uh, trying to find every everything along the Oregon Trail that I could, and I think that this was near the Oregon Trail. It's it's near water. There's a railroad here, and but there's very little information about Wendover, Wyoming online. Um, I couldn't find anything about the history and. I haven't really seen people online make YouTube videos, so I don't know. There's not much to be found. Um, it is desolate. It's down a one-way road, not a one-way road, but it's down a road that you have to turn around and go back. It's So it's very out of the way. We're a little bit uh, west of Guernsey, Wyoming, which is famous for kind of the uh, Guernsey wagon ruts and the register cliff because of the Oregon Trail. Uh, but this place is remarkable. Um, there is a few things along the rail. I'm assuming these had to do something with the railroad and there's a couple of those. And then there's a house, which I am not going inside, even though no one would stop me out here. It's certainly, um, you just never know what's in there and definitely, uh, all by yourself out here, not going to take that chance, but it is, uh, it's really beautiful. Very, very beautiful. So let's take a walk around and and check out Wendover, Wyoming. Jeffrey City, Wyoming, here in the central part of the state. Uh, this was a big boom town because of uranium mining, and then it busted uh, pretty, you know, fairly quickly in the mining world because of that as well. Uh, originally, believe it or not, this was called Home on the Range, and it was a small community, mostly a farm, and it had a post office and a gas station and not too much else. And then when the uh, uranium was discovered, it was uh, financially kind of invested in and backed by a guy uh, named Jeffrey. Last name was Jeffrey, and so they named it Jeffrey City. And then it then it boomed, and up to 4,000 people lived here. And and then about 30 years later, when the kind of the floor fell out of that um, out of that deal, there people moved out immediately. The whole city was reliant on. The mining so 95 percent of the people left and so it was it was quick to become a ghost town and today there's only maybe yeah you know, i imagine there's 50 people here 
but um, there's a lot of buildings. It's a pretty big area, so I'll definitely drive around and show you. Uh, pretty interesting. I mean, there's even wildlife walking through the middle of town, so it is certainly ghostly in every sense of the word. I mean, this is a true, legit ghost town. I mean, it, it is as authentic and, and kind of amazing that it's still here in this form and fashion that's, that uh, hasn't been destroyed. Uh, but Piedmont has a very fascinating, long history. Um, I, would, I would go on like Wikipedia and read the whole long history of, about Piedmont. It started as a railroad town and a logging and timber town. They would get timber from the local Utica mountains and bring it here. And they would build railroad ties for the railroad. So the railroad came through here. Uh, but there's a, there's a lot of different things about the railroad and the disagreements and things that happen with the railroad. And eventually they built a tunnel through the uh, mountains and bypassed here because this was a hard place to get to for the railroad so they bypassed here and and then when that happened the town just that th was you know it was a small town but it, it had businesses and had I'd read as read as many as four saloons seems like that's a lot of saloons for a small town but um, but so after that point in the 19 I think 40s the the railroad or the uh, town really declined and became a ghost town. So fascinating place to stop. I know that it's really way out here in Wyoming if you're not from here, uh, but if you're ever somewhat in the area, certainly take a detour and, and check out Piedmont, Wyoming. Just down the street, there's a historical site of kilns. And that what a kiln is, is they would take the, the wood and they would uh, heat it up and to make a charcoal. And they would use the charcoal for the railroads. And so 
railroads would stop here and they would uh, get charcoal for, you know, to help power the railroad. Sage, Wyoming is in the very western part, almost to Idaho, just a few miles <clears throat> from the Idaho border. It, is, uh, it was hard to find much information about Sage um, on the online. So we're here obviously by the railroad. And so I'm assuming that it was a railroad town um, of some sort, but also we're here right near where the Oregon Trail went. So Maybe if somebody knows the history of this area, maybe it had some people that were um, connected with the Oregon Trail or the California Trail and possibly the railroad and the combination of the two create a little settlement. When I drove up, the uh, entrance to the town is closed. It says keep out, so definitely respecting that. Uh, but you can get pretty close to it by just driving down a fairly <laughs> you need a 4x4 or um you know high clearance vehicle to to go down the little path next to the uh railroad and so the and the train cars kind of block the town the view of the town from highway 30 the the lincoln highway so there's a lot of traffic over here and if uh, these railroad cars weren't here you'd be able to see this so maybe they're they do that on purpose to keep people from knowing that it even exists but uh, I'll take my drone up and see if I can get a little closer and give you an idea of what Sage looks like. The walls are talking. This was a this was a big city, so this was a big boom city because of mining, and then it was a big bust city because of mining. Uh, it was a big bust. It was a big. Boom, <laughs> start up. 